This is the story of lust, evil, and tragedy. It sent shockwaves through the city of Chongqing. On November 2nd, a horrific event took place. Two children fell from the 15th floor of an apartment building. Just moments later, a distraught father appears. He throws his body to the ground, wailing and screaming. He even slams his head into the concrete repeatedly. Neighbors gather and an ambulance is called. Hello strangers and strangelings. Welcome back to the Strange Bar and Grill. Today I'm serving up another true crime story time. Now right now, I'm not sipping on anything because I'm actually recording this in the middle of the day. And the story is actually so horrific to me that I want to keep my dumb jokes to a minimum. But pull up a chair if you like strange true crime and storytelling, then this is the place to be. Here with me, JP. So let's go. Now, before we begin this horrific tale, let me introduce you to the characters in this story. First, we have the father, Zhang Bo. Next to him, we have his girlfriend, Ye Qingqin. Next, we have the two innocent children, Ray Shu Wei, the girl, she's just two years old, and her little brother, Yang Rui, and he's just one and a half years old. Qin Mei Lin is their mother, and finally, we have Maylene's mother, and we'll just call her Grandma because I couldn't find her name. When Maylene and Zhang got married, Grandma was very against it. She didn't think Zhang was a good match for her daughter. And now they didn't stay married long, and Grandma supported this divorce to the fullest. She agreed to help her daughter out with her two kids as the dad went his separate way and got his own home. Grandma was also dealing with a cancer diagnosis, so it became extremely difficult for her to care for two small children while her now divorced daughter was working. The family decided that the mom, Maylene, would keep the daughter while the boy would go to live with his father. This was to help alleviate the pressure of Mei Lin having to take care of two kids and her ailing mother. And at some point in the story, the father, Zhang, meets Ye Ching Chin. Chin Chin and Zhang are starting to get serious and they begin to fall in love. Zhang didn't disclose that he was previously married nor that he had two children when they began dating. Ching Chin comes from a wealthy family, so he knew he had to keep that on the low to get her. Eventually, he tells her the truth about his situation. Ching Chin is like, oh, hell no. I'm not trying to be a stepmom and take care of these bratty little kids. I really like you and everything, but I can't do the kid thing, so you're going to have to do something about these kids because I can't tell my family that I'm marrying a man with not one, but, but two kids. Meanwhile, in another part of the city, Maylene is just trying to take care of her sick mother and her little girl. They don't really have much interaction with Zhang, the father, because he's out there chasing women like Ching Chin. Six months go by without him actually even seeing his daughter. And I guess Zhang began to realize this, so he tells his ex-wife that he wants to spend some quality time with his daughter. Because the last time he saw her, she really didn't even recognize him. And he was getting a little concerned about the distance between the brother and the sister because they weren't really growing up together. They don't have a bond like they should. He's saying all these things, you know, he wants to buy her some clothes, he wants to get her some gifts. You know, he wants to spend time with his baby girl and Maylene is like, yeah, okay, sure. And she says, you know, I mean, yeah, I do think you really need to spend time with your daughter. So, all right, cool. I'll bring her over to your place so she can hang out with you and her and, and her brother. But you know, the whole time she's probably rolling her eyes like this mother. You know, I mean, that's universal no matter the language, you know, or the culture. So it's November 2nd on a cold day. So it's not the typical time of year where one is just hanging out on the balcony on the 15th floor. But somehow these two tiny children manage to climb up the balcony and fall down. They fall down 15 stories to the ground below. And at this point, neighbors have gathered around this horrific scene. And here comes Zhang, the father, in his pajamas at 3.30 in the afternoon and he runs down to where the crowd is gathering and he throws himself to the ground and he's wailing and he's crying and he's just slamming his head into the ground into the wall repeatedly over and over and over and finally someone calls an ambulance you know the ambulance arrives and the medics they say that you no know, this young girl her life ended pretty much immediately on impact but the boy the boy's still breathing so there's hope for the boy and they rush him to the hospital the police begin to question Zhang, of course, who initially says that they just fell 
But everyone is kind of perplexed at how a two-year-old and a one-year-old can climb up the balcony and just fall. So it's not likely. And the police would ask Zhang, what were you doing when they fell? And he says, I was taking a nap. I was sleeping. I don't know how the children got out into the balcony, but that was his first response. But upon being questioned further and asked the same exact questions, his story kind of changed a little bit. This time he said he was eating and the kids fell off the balcony. So now, of course, all eyes are on Zhang, the father. Unfortunately, days later, the baby boy succumbed to his injuries and he passed away as well on November 10th. The police arrested Zhang and they also arrested Chen Chen. But why was Chen Chen arrested too? Well, let's see. It was actually discovered that Chen Chen and Zhang were in a long relationship, almost a situationship, before his divorce was final. And I guess the guilt finally got to him and he started talking to the detectives. He confessed that he threw his two children off the balcony and that he killed his kids. He said that he did this because he was under the pressure from his girlfriend, Cheng Chen. She would not stop harassing him about getting rid of them. She said that if he didn't do something about the kids, then she would hurt herself. She said that if he did not get rid of the kids, he would lose her forever. And he made the choice to choose his girlfriend over his two children. Horrible father. Zhang's mother hired a high-powered attorney and she decided to rent a house nearby to be closer to help her child through this mess he's gotten himself into. Shortly after learning that this man actually did commit this horrific crime, the attorney excused himself. He wanted no parts of defending this sicko. So shout out to that lawyer because he has some form of integrity. Or maybe he just didn't want to be the guy that was known for defending a person of this type of crime. And now the mother of this scumbag who decided to move into this neighborhood was basically exiled from the community. She was harassed daily until she left. They found another attorney eventually because in July 26th, 2021, a trial was had. On December 28th of the same year, the court sentenced these two dickweeds to the death penalty for intentional homicide. Remember that insult back in the 80s, dickweeds? I'm bringing it back. They immediately appealed, but things just hit the fan in January of 2022 because that's when all of their WeChat records came to light. Now, WeChat is an all-encompassing app in China, and I can't really compare it to a Western app because it's basically like your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, news, and all of that just kind of wrapped up into one app. And I think it's important to note for those who don't know, that WeChat records are 100% admissible in court. So just like text messages here in the US and whatnot, they will use that against you. And as you might imagine, there are thousands of text messages between these two. I mean, they were in a relationship after all, so they were probably sending each other tons of messages. And a lot of those messages showed that they were plotting to get rid of these two children. Somebody online typed all of this stuff out and I was able to find some of the translated messages. So in February of 2020, Chen Chen starts to tell Zhang that her family cannot accept the fact that he has kids and he needs to do something about it. She says the two children are a burden and I cannot marry you unless you kill them. They have to be ridden from the earth. Instead of saying, bitch, you tripping, bye. Zhang, for some reason, is listening to her and hears her out. She goes on for months giving him ideas. Maybe you can poison them. Maybe you can take them on a trip and drown them in a lake. She's giving Zhang idea after idea and just constantly pressuring him to get rid of his kids. And by June of 2020, Zhang and Chen Chen, they were all in on this get rid of the kids plan. Chen Chen is aware that Zhang only has custody of the boy, but she needs both of the kids gone. So it was her idea to put them two together. This plan to go get the girl, put them together and get rid of them all at the same time was all Chen Chen's idea. But, but Zhang, he's, he's a little apprehensive still. He's stalling a little bit. And he's giving her all these reasons like why he can't do this. He's like, well, the girl, she doesn't even really know me like that because I'm never around. I'm always with you. It's going to be a little bit hard to just like have her come with me. The last time I saw her, she didn't even want to come over to talk to me. She didn't even want to hug me. She doesn't even really recognize me. Anymore. And Chin Chin is like, I don't care about what you're saying right now. Get it done. Figure it out. Get them together right now. And then Zhang, he's still trying to come up with another way and he's just throwing out ideas. He's just like, I don't think these kids are really going to be a problem for us. Like, I'm just going to give the boy back to his mom 
And like I said, the girl, she doesn't really even know me that well. She doesn't really like me. So it's not going to be a big deal. I'll just get the kid back and we can just move on with our lives and we can still be together. So that I can guarantee they won't be a burden. They won't even be in our lives. But Ching Chin is not hearing any of that. She asked, well, how are you going to buy me a house if you have to take care of these kids? How are you going to buy me a nice car if you have to take care of these kids? How are you going to be able to afford me if you don't get rid of these two kids? All your money is going to go to these two kids. You have to get rid of these two kids now. According to the WeChat messages, he broke up with her around this time. He was thinking to himself, I don't know why this girl keeps telling me to kill my kids. I'm not going to kill my kids. She must be crazy. Well, September rolls around and it's starting to get a little chilly, a little chill in the air, and it's cuffing season. And he's beginning to miss Chin Chin. He hits Chin Chin up and she's like, do you still have two kids? Then you can't be with me. I'm not about to see you until you get rid of these kids. So these two continue to go back and forth in WeChat, where a record is kept, even though they deleted it, and all these records got leaked to the internet. And as I said, they appealed the conviction, death penalty sentence. Now they're entitled to an appeal, but once those records came out, the entire city, maybe the entire country, wanted their heads on stakes. Immediately after their messages leaked and hit the internet, these two came up with a new plan. They recanted their original confessions. They said that they had mental illness. They took the insanity route, basically. And Zhang would basically say, I wasn't in my right state of mind. This girl got into my head and made me think I should do this. And of course, the public wasn't buying it because that's a load of crap. So they would pull up the footage back from the date of the incident and people would comment on how this father's acting skills were, were over the top as he threw himself to the ground knowing he just threw his children to the ground just moments before. He was wailing and really putting on this award-winning performance, crying, snot bubbles and stuff. Some of the neighbors said that Zhang decided to write not one, not two, but three letters to his ex-wife. He apologized for removing her children from the earth. He said he regrets it and he wanted her to forgive him. He also offered his ex-wife a house as in compensation for her children. And I know this is kind of like a Chinese concept where if you wrong someone, then you make it right by kind of offering them some sort of compensation. For example, like if you hit someone with your car and they don't die, but maybe you broke their leg, you may offer them a large sum of money so that they can go to the hospital, get their legs fixed, you know, etc. And that's just kind of how things are kind of done in China. But to offer your ex-wife a house because you murdered your children, that's a little much. That's sick. Anyway, after reading these letters, Maylene was shocked that this man would actually ask for her forgiveness and offer her a house. She did take the time to write him back. She said she would never forgive him or his little whore. No, she didn't say that last part, but she probably was thinking something similar or said something similar. But she did say that the only thing that would please her is seeing both of them executed as soon as possible. Now, the death penalty is always an interesting topic of discussion. In some cases, depending on what country you're in, a life prison sentence is probably worse than the death penalty. The death penalty is almost like an easy way out for some people in some cases. But if I was wronged in this same situation in the same way, I would want them swiftly executed. So I understand the mother's stance in this. Well, what do you guys feel about the death penalty? Leave me a message in the comment section. I'm curious as to where you guys stand. The mom, the person who was the most wronged in this tragic story, besides the children, of course, that's exactly what she wanted. And many people in China did as well. They wanted them executed swiftly. On April 6th, 2023, they had their second trial. This is their appeal. This time, things moved a lot faster because just over a month later in May, the same sentence came down and they were scheduled to be executed. On January 31st, 2024, just before Chinese New Year began, these two dickweeds, and remember, I'm bringing that 80 stuff back, these two dong plants were executed. And I'm not sure of the exact method, but I think by firing squad is the typical way in China. But I've also read other people saying that they were uh, executed by lethal injection. One thing I'll say about China's system is that they do not play. Getting the death penalty, they enact that right away. There's not tons of appeals dragging it out over time and time and time again. So that's a good thing if you actually did it. Not a good thing if you're completely innocent.
All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today. If you're new to my channel, then maybe consider subscribing and joining that SPG fan. Like, comment, and all that good cliche stuff. And usually I say, remember, I've been drinking, but I ain't been driving. But today I ain't been drinking and ain't driving because I'm sitting in my house. So be good, be safe.